If you want to take your rhythm playing from something like this to this, make sure you watch to the end of this video because I'm going to be sharing five tips to help you take your rhythm playing to the next level. The first strategy is to make sure you're using the right pick. Now, for the most part, this is sort of a personal preference thing, but there's a couple of guidelines that I can share with you that might help you to get a basis for where you would start. The first thing you wanna do is make sure your pick isn't too thin. I use about a 1.5 millimeter thickness pick, which might be a little thick for some, but anywhere between a millimeter and 1.5 millimeters is gonna be good for flat picking and bluegrass style. Typically, the thicker you go for a pick, the darker your sound is going to be, and vice versa, a thinner pick is going to be a little brighter in sound. So just figure out what works for you and what you're going for. And another thing that affects the tone of the pick is the material. So some common materials are plastic, casein, uh, tortoiseshell, even buffalo horn. The last thing about picks is that you have to find the shape you like. Typically the standard for bluegrass playing is a triangle pick because it gives you a fast attack and uh, a very direct tone. But uh, you can experiment with a bunch of different things. There's round picks, teardrop picks, all sorts of things like jazz picks, but you just gotta figure out what works for you. And I will be doing a video in the future on pick shapes, so make sure you subscribe so you don't miss out on any of that. A second thing that's gonna help your rhythm playing is adding embellishing licks to your playing. This is one of the most important aspects of guitar that separates the intermediates from the pros. I'm sure if you're familiar with bluegrass music, you've probably heard some of these. The, the prime example of this is the G run. But what we can do with this potentially is move this around to different areas. So we can do it in C. We can do it in D even something like E or A. Basically, you could just move stuff around. You can use the same lick in multiple different areas and it's gonna sound different and it's gonna convey a different message. That's something that can easily spice up your playing with minimal effort. The third tip for rhythm guitar playing is dynamics. This, in my opinion, is one of the most important things for a rhythm guitar player to learn because ultimately what you're doing as a rhythm player is serving the song. You're not showing off how hard you can slam a downbeat, you're basically assisting the song and conveying a feeling. And generally the rule I like to follow with this is if somebody other than me is in the spotlight, so basically almost all the time you want to quiet down, but in between lines you can ramp up the energy and, and fill the void that is there when somebody is, for example, not singing or not playing. Tony Rice was the master of this. Specifically going into choruses of the songs, he'll change the energy completely just by how loudly he's playing. And I'll play an example of this right now. So darling, this is all that I can sing. I'd rather be alone have you dream. As you can see, when the verse is ending, he's ramping up the energy a little bit, but then when the three-part harmonies come, he quiets down to give room for all of that in the mix. And it's basically like live mixing, so you don't have to have a sound man turning your, your knobs all the time because you're too loud. This can also be especially helpful if you're on, in a live setting using like a DI or something. You can't move back and forth from the mic, so you're basically gonna have to do your mixing with your right hand instead of other traditional means. I can promise you if you master dynamics, it's going to make your playing a lot more musical and interesting to others. Once you learn how to conquer dynamics, another thing you can do is learn different voicings of chords. Now in bluegrass, we sort of stereotypically use the cowboy chords, as they're called, but there's actually a bunch of different versions of these chords that you can use that can apply to different sounds and different feelings. Alright, so we all know this form of G, probably. And that's great, you can use that. Another thing that you could do though is use sort of a closed power G that looks something more like this. And that would be used sort of more in a hard driving bluegrass setting. It's got sort of more, more punch and oomph to it. So if you want that, then you can use that. Also in a different direction, you could use sort of a jazzy G like this. If you're doing maybe like a 
some swing or like a Foggy Mountain special. <laughs> This can really change your rhythm, but you have to make sure that you're not overusing these chords randomly just because you know them. I've heard a lot of players that just insert chords for no reason, and it sounds really out of place. So you gotta make sure you're doing this tastefully and to the benefit of the song, not just to show off. All right, so the last tip today, I saved this one for last because I think it's the most difficult to learn and takes the most time but it's to learn different rhythm patterns. Every good player has their own sort of distinct rhythm pattern that defines them. The thing I did when I was developing my playing was I just learned how to play like these people and emulate them. So that way I have the skill to do it if I need to, but then I can mesh all of these styles together to make my own sort of style, and it's not gonna sound like I'm copying other people. When I was growing up, I listened to a lot of Tony Rice uh, I learned a lot of Dan Tominsky style rhythm, um, Tim Stafford, Lester Flatt, of course, and even my dad influenced my rhythm a lot. And over time, once you accumulate all of these skills of like different rhythm patterns, uh, you sort of get like a bag of tricks that you can use to make your rhythm playing sound different in some different situations. And it's gonna really put you aside from all the others because you're gonna have more versatility and you can make more sounds than most people if they just learn one sort of style of rhythm. And most of this sort of happened subconsciously just because I liked their playing and I wanted to sound like them. And you know, you, you're not always thinking when you're playing, oh, let me sound like Billy Strings or let me, or maybe you are, I don't know. But you sort of subconsciously get used to using all these different devices, sort of compiling them together into your own style. So that's it. That's all the tips I had for today. I uh, hope you guys have a good day and I'll see you later.